In this video guys, today I'm wanting to talk about Viking helmets. That's all coming up. So it's a really, really interesting subject. In all, we have a total of six Viking helmets that have been found. And it's really interesting from a whole range of different points of view, because from a period that lasts from roughly 793 till 1066, we have a total of six helmets that have been found. Not many helmets that have been found, in other words, across such a massive geological area. It goes right from Western Europe right into Eastern Europe. We've had helmets found in Denmark, Norway, Sweden and Kiev, as well as one helmet that was found in a place called Yam, which is northeast of England. Now all of these helmets have certain things in common. Before we go too far into this, let's talk about the Vendel period. The Vendel period happened really just after the, the collapse of the Roman Empire in the Vendel period, we see some very stylized helmets starting to emerge. Very clear Roman influence because many of these tribes, the Germanic tribes, would have interacted with the Roman Empire or perhaps even been auxiliaries within the Roman legions. So Vendel period helmets look a lot like this. Lots of um, shapes that might be interpreted as dragons or snakes boars are another common feature. You have um, lots of detailing in brass. You have this mask effect which is very common throughout the various Vendel period helmets and we have this Aventail. Now it's really important to understand that iron was a very rare commodity during this period. There really weren't many sort of mines or anything like that so iron was achieved going to bogs. We get what's called bog iron. Now this is really significant because bog iron uh, is, is it's a renewable source however uh, obviously not the same kind of quality that you would get from more modern irons. But it's the reason I believe that armor is relatively scarce, weapons are fairly scarce, they're much smaller and helmets are certainly fairly scarce. It certainly raises a great deal of questions because if we look at the Bentley Grange helmet uh, it's certainly interpreted that this helmet was at least in part leather. And that goes across several different sources including some of the Norse sagas. Now this is really interesting because in the Norse sagas it certainly appears that helmets did next to nothing to stop weapons. In fact there's one saga, uh, please leave a comment below if you know which one it is, uh, it slips my mind, but the um, one of the characters is absolutely shocked when his weapon uh, doesn't in fact pierce through the, the helmet of his opponent. And so that suggests to me that these helmets were either made of very low quality iron, perhaps they were um, made of leather and possibly um, the word helmet has actually been confused and it doesn't mean what we think it means. Helmet may in fact be hat or something like that. That's also got to be a possibility. We certainly know that some weapons uh, during this period were incredibly well known, had names and had a lot of detailing. We're going to talk about weapons of the early medieval period in a different video. Please click up here. So, what do we know about these early medieval helmets. All of the Viking helmets share a lot of things in common. They're all of a very similar design and that is they're all spangen helms. A spangen helm uh, is made of four sections of iron, 
which are held together by strips here and historically these strips would have been riveted on to the four panels to hold them in place and this seems to be a relatively consistent theme throughout the medieval period. There's helmets like this that have been found much earlier and also much later. Some people describe these, uh, some historians today describe these as weaknesses yeah, in the design, stating that um, the, 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 these strips with the rivets would be a weak point and that um, consequently not such a good idea. I have had friends test these helmets to destruction. That is a modern reproduction of these helmets tested to destruction with modern reproduction medieval weapons and some of these helmets have actually stood up really really well. The Yamanbur helmet, uh, like all of the other so-called Viking helmets, has this mast section. We think that we could certainly interpret it that there would be a leather suspension system inside with a, a leather strap to hold the helmet in place. The other really interesting point is that the helmet has this spike on top of the Yamanbur helmet. Now if we have a look at the have a look at the um, the original just up here uh, you will see that um, the original helmet has been partially reconstructed with modern metal so the, the rough sections are all original and the smoother sections are more modern. However, let's just take a quick look at this. Now you can see this spike section here. Now this is quite a small one. I've seen other reproductions with much bigger spikes on them. It's really difficult to know how to interpret the spike. Um, was it a combat piece? Perhaps. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, you could probably headbutt someone with that, I guess. I, I don't know. Or, or maybe it was a significant sort of... Maybe it was to signify the role of the person wearing the helmet. We don't know again. And the back of the helmet would have had an aventail very similar to the um, Vendel period helmet I showed you earlier. So what do we know? Four sections to make a spangle helm held together by the strips with a face plate made out of bog iron. And it's really interesting because these helmets have a much more kind of um, dome shape to them. And that's kind of significant. I'll show you why in a second. From around the 11th century, that is the 10 hundreds, we start to see the rise of the conical nasal helm, so-called nasal helm. These became very widespread in use and lasted throughout really the rest of the medieval period nasal because it has this nasal bar here um, now these could be constructed in two different ways one is the spangle helm type design or the second way was you essentially had two panels that were um, pretty much welded together uh, and arguably that makes a very better helmet what absolutely is noticed is that some of these rivets and so on could catch weapons and um, cause damage to the helmets themselves that way and it's probably why the stylizing of the helmets was taken away. You did see that kind of return to helmets for a brief period um, during the kind of higher middle ages when they were used for tournament helmets but again um, it becomes something that the lance could catch onto and the opponent could end up breaking their neck even if they don't fall off the horse. Um, because of the force that's applied to the helmet. Of significance, the conical shape of these nasal helms means that weapons just glance off them, um, much more so than they do with a domed helmet. Now, we only know of six helmets that have been found, which are, I guess if you like, of Viking origin. It's, it's really hard and very speculative to say that, um, because just because a helmet was made somewhere doesn't mean it wasn't traded or sold doesn't mean it wasn't stolen doesn't mean it wasn't you know taken as a, a prize from battle however um, it is interesting to note that with an avantail the helmets become actually very provide a great deal of protection the disadvantage of helmets like this is that 
for some strange reason that I'm yet to be able to understand, this kind of spectacle visor, if you like, does seem to attract blows. Now we've done some research of that uh, in my medieval group and I know other people have done the same and it just simply becomes a visual clue or a visual target and perhaps for some sort of unconscious reason people do tend to target these spectacle sections so with ranged weapons such as arrows and spears this would be a problem um, this because it creates a target however the advantage of helmets like this is that they provide a great deal of protection from slashing blows so if you assume it's the commander who wears a helmet like this and this is part of the signifying of so the advantage of wearing a helmet like this is it provides a great deal of protection against slashing blows and so if you think about it, can, coupled with, a, with an aventail, that is the chainmail skirt that comes down that protects the kind of neck and shoulders, um, you actually have a phenomenal amount of protection. Now I realise that this kind of does attract ranged weapons like spears and arrows, but what's really, really interesting is there is a possibility that helmets like this were either worn by something like the, the bodyguards, that is the Viking herd, Perhaps berserkers, or possibly the actual chieftain himself, and these helmets would kind of signify um, that that's the person you need to keep an eye on because he's the one, she's the one who is giving the instructions on the leadership of the battle. So lots of really interesting ideas there. I really, really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'll catch you in my next video.